Well, I don't know. We, we, in the past, we've kind of called it a nugget jam of sorts, where we want to kind of come up with some story pitch, if we can. It doesn't have to be very detailed. But we'll do it by um, throwing out lots of little bits and pieces. Like we'll have characters. We'll have some genres. Uh, let me some locations uh, and set pieces and some complications of some kind. And we'll see if we even need premises. I don't know. So this is a real free for all. I don't know if, how, how well it's going to go, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to throw out some, some, uh, some characters. So we have a shaman, a balloon artist, and a bartender. Now, I don't know if any of these characters are going to be useful just yet, but I'm going to throw in a random element of some kind, and we'll see if like we can a, figure a out. A balloon animal creating shaman is already a fantastic character. <laughs> okay, you, you so can make have... your spirit animal. Oh, good. He'll make your spirit I... animal while you're there in front of him. So we have satire I'm, I'm as a genre. glad it's satire. So so, yeah, because that, that, that works well. All right, so the next element is a set piece. I guess, I'm sorry, uh, locations. We have an aquarium. Um, make sure I get these in the right places. So uh, that's a genre. And then we have... Can it be Shamu instead of Shaman <laughs> at the aquarium? Uh, and we have hang gliding in Lebanon as a set piece uh -oh. of some kind. Oh, maybe it's a bit uh, the Beirut Aquarium. That'd be cool. Okay. And then we have um, a complication, which is a loss of some sensory perception of some kind. So. Gentlemen. Oh, can you imagine if a balloon artist, like, had their hands cut off? <laughs> <laughs> that a, would be sad. Uh, uh, a paraplegic <laughs> balloon artist. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, they can it's, invent well, no, all sorts of ways. You're, do, you're doing... You're I mean doing that my would left foot with balloon that, artistry. Yeah, that, I mean that would be exactly. fascinating. They would have they yeah. would they would be captivating, I think, you know. Um <laughs> well they do all sorts of weird shit with their mouth and their toes or something. Wow. Okay. So that's that's pretty intense. My left foot as a balloon artist. Um Actually, hang hang gliding would be kind of difficult too if you're Well, I mean you can be harnessed. So I don't know, the paraplegic thing that that that's uh that's a little on the disturbing side. I was just uh, throwing shit at the wall there. We don't have to commit to that. <laughs> I, I say we do. I can think of something a little, you know, less. Because then, at the end, it's a sad thing. He drowns himself in the aquarium. So it's just this torso floating down, as all these school children are clustered around the giant window at the center of the aquarium. And the shit sharks are nibble. Start to nibble. <laughs> We have, okay, sorry, can I, uh, this is just, uh, I don't know, I've always wanted to use this story. We have a, a very, we have like a very, very good aquarium in Vancouver. It's like, it's a, it's a really massive and uh, lovely um, um, institution exhibit. And at one point, um, all these fish were going missing. And they couldn't figure out what was going on. Like the fish were going missing. And so they'd come in in the morning and they'd count the fish in like whatever tank. And they'd be like, okay, like four of the fish are missing. And they were like, what the fuck? Like it's been closed. Like we don't know what's going on. So they set up, uh, they set up surveillance cameras. A fish and it was the Pacific. Game. No, it was the Pacific octopus who rarely comes out of their little, like, it's beautiful. I've seen it a couple wow. of times. I've been lucky. It rarely, it hides. And it was fucking yeah. crawling out of the top of its, out of the top <laughs> of its, it's, it's, it's whatever you call it, container. And like yeah. crawling down the hallway and crawling up into the other ones, grabbing some fish, eating them, and then crawling back and going home. <laughs> it's fantastic. Isn't that, that great? I That's fucking perfect. love that That's story. Brilliant. There was that this. This brilliant. reminds me of another situation, which is a video that my daughter absolutely loved. I don't know if this is the video, but the video was called um, "Shark versus Octopus," and it was because in this tank, uh, the sharks kept disappearing, and similarly. It was because uh, this doesn't look like the video, but basically I have to look for it. But it's because the octopus was eating the shark, the sharks, and you know, people didn't realize oh, that. Oh, there he is. Look, that, there he is. You know, 
the octopus could be so violent. <laughs> They're amazing creatures. There's a there's actually a book just called Octopus that I gave Amanda for Mother's Day or something, and it's uh, I haven't read it, but she says it's amazing. It's uh, they're incredible uh, organisms. Wow. Hmm. So yeah, don't mess with the octopus. <laughs> anyway, that was a bit of a tangent, but that story just okay, kills me. Right, I've no, always wanted on. to use it somewhere. <laughs> That's great. An octopus balloon artist. Imagine the balloon artistry that an octopus could do. Yes. I also was wondering if those fish were disappearing as the shaman was doing something there, but he can, uh, the loss of sensory. Right. We haven't really explored the shaman. Actually, uh, there's, a bar cons- there's a bartender who can't taste anything, I guess, which is also a bit problematic if you have to, uh, if you're a cocktail designer. <laughs> Only if people expect Where, it is- to taste good, I guess. Yeah. But I like the school trip concept, you know, because the school trips or hang gliding school trip or the aquarium school trip and something happens there. I mean, an aquarium is actually, when you think about it, a very dangerous place because they have those um, feeding, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, moments, right, where they, they congregate the kids and they go and feed the animals. And of course, you know, bad stuff happens sometimes during that where, or Shamu tries to drown the uh, their... Uh, we had a we, we had a we had an incident here, not in the aquarium, but it was in the on, on in the ocean where it was like everybody was feeding the uh, otters, getting really close to the otters, and one of them just like fucking gro- came up and grabbed the two year old and dragged it down. God. Um, mm. Yeah, God. they rescued it, but uh, yeah, the otter just got tired like of it and was like, <laughs> "Fuck you!" <laughs> jumped up and <laughs> grabbed him. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not here for your amusement. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, well, there's the famous one of the gorilla, right? Who went and took a. He didn't. He attack somebody that um, he didn't like the look of at the zoo. I'm trying to remember which what what this was, where that was. Gorilla attack. Uh, let me look, look it up here. Um. Oh, it was the gorilla shot to save a child in a Cincinnati zoo. Hmm. Okay, well, no, that's a bit sad. So, yeah, zoo. To zoo make this that important. satire, I think we'd have to have a human dressed as a gorilla. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, the cash, actually, isn't it like, um, you know, you, uh, you go to amusement parks and they have sort of um, exhibits that are supposed to go back in time and they have people dressed up as primitives or something, you know, in the cave and. And showing how they would live and how they would cook and eat, and you imagine being one of those actors that has to, you know, wear that costume all day and pretend that you can't, you know, speak English and stuff, and you've got to go around doing all those, going through the pantomime. So I guess you could have one of those exhibits at at the zoo or the aquarium or something, and uh, somehow. Uh, George together. Saunders has an extraordinary short story called Pastoralia, which is the, the title of a collection, which is, is that exact um, yes. story <laughs> yes, that's right. in a kind of vaguely futuristic dystopia. Um, I mean, actually, that's, yeah, it's a really fantastic story. What would you call that exhibit? Wow. That's a sort of um, a living, a living exhibit. I mean, living, what, yeah, living museum or something. Living museum. I mean, yeah, what tableau? What would that be? I mean, how could that be pushed? I mean, a living exhibit. Um, I mean, he did a great job. I know the story you're talking about. Um, but, you know, maybe nowadays, what would be the sort of equivalent um, of a living uh, exhibit somewhere? Um, of maybe not that long ago. Well, in the 90s, I mean, this is again going back, but uh, Guillermo Gomez Pena and, and Coco Fusco, um, uh, who are sort of Latinx uh, American performance types. She's a prof at Columbia or something. Um, they had this whole uh, kind of, you know, it's very 90s kind of border culture thing, like where they they would go to like the Smithsonian or whatever and be in a cage and, uh, and kind of enact the Amazonian primitive. Um, um, 
so that's kind of an exam his slightly historical example of that also makes me think of slaughterhouse five um mm, the aliens who have uh uh whatever his name is i can't remember his name and the woman that they've kidnapped as well to kind of they want they just all sit and watch them um uh, there's a, yeah. there, there's also I mean I was watching um God I can't try to pull it up but there was this uh there's a series on PBS here called Asian Americans and um at at uh trying to think there was a there was an expo and they brought um Filipinos over from the Philippines and made them wear uh you know kind of native dress and live like um in in sort of huts and like in sort of natural habitat and it was uh this is it there we go and it was really disturbing because they were just doing it to sort of say hey look at these savage people and aren't they funny kind of thing and it was a you know kind of a horrible historical uh uh oddity anyway so there we go so that's uh i'm just trying to think which is exactly what yeah um and that wasn't that long ago it was the world's fair in um when it was st louis in 1904 so you know it's not like we're talking that long ago um and so sort of thinking if you had a world's fair today what other kind of um you know sort of strange and culturally embarrassing things might we do in a modern contemporary setting that's like that well you could reenact a um you could reenact a um a uh, police shooting of a black man or murder of a black man uh, oh, on the Rodney, uh, the Rodney you know, King on, or something, yeah. or more contemporary, like the last, you know, the kid in Atlanta last week or two weeks ago or whatever, like the going for a jog in a white neighborhood and getting, you know, you could do those kinds of uh, things. I see the jogging while black exhibit. Jogging while black, exactly. Yes, I mean this is getting into some some dangerous territory for for us, I know. But I'm just sort of thinking there's an interesting idea of a school trip. Whenever I think of school trips, unfortunately, I think of Lord of the Flies. But there's a school trip to some kind of living exhibit. Um, I don't know how the balloon artist is involved, but um, uh, somehow they become enmeshed with the um, with the exhibit. Actually, if they are if this is a racial story, then they are mistaken for uh, for performers in the exhibit or something, or there's some kind of strange uh, event involving them. Well, I like the setup, like potentially in that it's like, it's like the, it becomes about the ways in which um, uh, kind of uh, dominant culture isn't quite the right word for it, but the ways in which like the, the, the powers that be and kind of like education and, and culture definition and education use these same kind of uh, uh, structures like the, the living exhibit, right? But th they're trying to do it for real, like to, to be very super contemporary and to like deal with the real issue and the real things. And the real thing is whatever, jogging while black or um, species loss or whatever it is. Um, and yeah, and then somehow that turns in the in in however the kids uh, uh, engage with or become um, subsumed by the uh, the exhibit. Actually, I'm, I, that gets me excited about the possibilities of like the mass extinction museum or something, where you know there's something that very bizarre that goes on there because you're 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 trying to deal with the fact that people just don't accept climate change properly or don't know what to do about it. And you're trying to rally them around and you've tried various tactics. So now you have a shock tactic of let, let's go to the mass extinction museum and somehow you become part of the exhibit. It's like a performance. Right. Then the dystopian one that, you know, yeah, the, the people go extinct or something inside of it. Like some <laughs> people, you know, some you take on, it's like the model UN. It's like, I'm the emperor penguin. And <laughs> 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 Sorry. Uh, no one was uh -oh. model UN. Okay. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, actually, the Mass Extinction Museum would just be you go to these different cages and these different exhibits, and there's nothing there. It's just sludge or ashes or something. 
I know, not even uh, or light or wasn't that Sad, but like true. A, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's sort of a you know life without you, um, kind of you know experience or life without us. But I like the sort of the, the fact that as a performance art piece, it trying to it sort of turns the tables on who the spectator is and who the spectated is, and uh, you know the, we we follow it through the school trip that um, gets taken in on some kind of uh, very dis disturbing um, experience, and that's what the well, there's something is. interesting there about about a, a seemingly a very dull standard teacher actually trying to take their students on a shamanistic journey. Oh, oh they, they could be the shaman. Good one. Hmm. The professor. Okay. The professor. That's good. There we go. Mm -hmm. The idea that they're using their normal class and a seemingly normal field trip. But it's not normal at all. Teach yeah. some, some cosmic truth to these children. Mm -hmm. So there's like a, and the loss of sensory is some kind of hallucinogenic experience where it's like you, your senses <laughs> you are, you're, you, all, the, all, the, all the kids, all the kids get an acid tab as they enter the or like mass uh, extinction. Or what's that? Kayahuasca, kayahuasca or whatever that stuff is. Kayahuasca. kayahuasca. Yeah. yeah give, give them that. Yeah. What is so that? All the kids. <laughs> what is the effects of it? What, uh, it what is it? You? Well, it makes you puke, but what is it? I saw a show about it, it uh, that was really great. Yeah. But it 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 and then it takes it's you on an extraordinary it's journey, apparently. Yeah, and it gets right at all your emotional shit. Like I think, I think it it's like whatever. It's like it's very therapy. Like a lot of therapy types use it. Um, so they take you so to it's the, like, the, the the emesis exhibit, right? And the kids are like wondering what is that, and then they start all vomiting from the <laughs> God. from from the uh, from the tab from the drugs they've been given. Uh, and actually, the this is interesting because now the balloon artist is almost like you remember the E. Cummings, the goat-footed balloon man, Marcus. I think you should remember that. I do. And goes so, me. That's right. So the balloon artist could be sort of like a the goat-footed balloon man. <laughs> to briefly, just uh, sidebar that the that was really fun. I remember that very clearly. Shooting that thing. Toby, we made, uh, it was David's, I think, idea and his dad, and we made uh, mm -hmm. kind of uh, filmic uh, represent, or we just, whatever, we filmed E.E. E. Cummings I, poems. So the, yeah, I did, did, I did you work one on of it? them. Yeah. I did oh, yeah, right. Them, and it was me, it was me, it was a poem about a prostitute, I think, and Gene Cox was the prostitute standing next to me. And I was, oh, Gene Cox. Oh. I was too sad. I was just saying some poem about her being a prostitute. <laughs> the things we do. That's such a crush on Gene Cox. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, and now yeah. it's out there. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> um, that was really fun, though. I remember that very, very clearly. Like, I have a very clear memory of that. That was cool. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, just building on that for a moment. So we were filming poetry and the idea was that we were going to experience the poetry in a different manner by inhabiting certain roles and then filming and then watching and that sounds to me like it's an interesting blue oh yeah right this, that the that the school trip is like you know you go in and you don't just look at things you become part of the exhibit and it forces you to reflect on what's happened yeah and it could be if it's really shamanistic like it could be i don't know this is not quite the balloon man but it's like it's it's, it's in the territory it's like I mean, this is just stupid, but, but like it, it, like it could, you know, like that you, you, the kids do have to become, cause people make kids do the weirdest shit, like in schools, it like you have, to, and sorry, there's this whole like in viral apocalypse kind of like thing that's done to children now. That's really like brutal, right? Like, it's like the world is ending and it's like this weird disavowal of responsibility by the adults. Like, I think like kind of subconsciously, it's like, <laughs> you gotta fix the world. Like you need to like, and, and it's quite Brilliant. moralistic and like a whole I bunch see, of stuff. Right. But it's like, it's because man, this is my partner is a teacher. Um, but like mm. it, 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 um, it, it could, you know, you have to be, it's like, we gotta become the emperor penguin. Okay, everybody, like you have no food, like, or whatever, like the the oil is coming. And they kind of like, like, 
And there's any number of kind it's of brilliant. like in my world, kind of better than this, but kind of participatory kind of avant-garde performance that asks audiences to do stuff like that. Not better than that, not stupid mm -hmm. like that, but uh, um, that's interesting. That's shamanic. It is shamanic and it's, you know, because performance well, ultimately yeah. is shamanic. Well, in actually, its, its... Um, this is this is getting closer now to real life because even though this was sort of a you know kind of dystopic uh, uh, satirical idea that we threw out there, there is a really interesting uh, virtual reality uh, experience that I saw where you have to witness um, a racial uh, beating, and it's sort of like what do you do while you're watching this? Like you are given some options, but it makes you feel incredibly uncomfortable because you're sort of behind a gate watching the police brutalize someone of a certain ethnicity and you are a bystander, but you could also become an activist or do something or, you know, and it sort of forces you to confront that situation by architecting it, right? So I'm just thinking that VR tr a VR trip is like a, like a shaman and a shamanic experience. Yeah, it could be. Where, you know, There's a... Mm. There's that uh, idea or, or kind of uh, conceptual idea kind of animates a, a whole thread of like avant-garde performance. Um, one of which was is a little subtler, um, but I found really super interesting is one where you, um, uh, you're, you're in a room and you're looking through a window and it's a dancer and she, um, says and it's only men who watch it or who participate in it or uh, yeah buy a ticket it's only for men and she's the dancer the creator of the piece is the dancer and she's like tell me what you want me to do and so you're put into this it's it's not as kind of um mm -hmm. i mean it's very ideological but it's not as 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 uh paint by numbers as the one the one or or, or you know as as um clear uh, uh, a construct is the one you talked about david but it's mm. this kind of very interesting um mm. uh uh ex like experience of complicity and your own desire as a man and mm. like uh all that kind of stuff there's a whole yeah there's a whole genre of that stuff which is super interesting well, I, and another one that i saw that um was one where again it's it's for men to experience they put on a vr headset and they're taken on a you know, they've done a, a, a virtual reality kind of filming where you can, you know, turn your head and see all directions, but it's a, basically a, a, a video. And the experience is that you are going to an abortion clinic and you're walking the line and having all these guys mm -hmm. scream at you and tell you what a, what a terrible mm -hmm. piece of this and that you are. And, and it's like a verbal assault that they're, you know, the experience is very harrowing because you, most men do not have that kind of experience in their life. So, and the inability to, to sort of respond. And, and yeah. so it's a, it's a very um, a, a, a aggressive assaulting experience. You feel, you know, like you've been violated in, in the experience. So the, so the VR has a funny, well, has a very powerful way of giving you something experiential that, that engages uh, your visual and auditory senses in a very powerful way while it sort of cuts off all the others. So it forces you to focus mm -hmm just on those that sensory perception and it, it can result in a very you know powerful experience and so i wonder if that if that w there's something here that we can can work on in that regard it's quite fascinating i mean it could, it could actually be an app but i'm just saying as a story you know people could collectively put on their headsets and then go on this shamanistic journey together that that really messes with their minds because a, a little bit like existence right uh the movie <laughs> existence, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, um, good old, uh, uh, Cronenberg, Cron Cronenberg. Yeah. Um, but, but, uh, yes. Yeah, so I, 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 we, I didn't, we didn't get as far as putting in the blank, filling in the blanks there, but I like, I like some of the, some of what's happened here. And so I want to noodle on this more. Um, but, uh, I, I've so, got about ten minutes, just so you okay. guys know. I, I'm going to have to go in about ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was hoping to. I was thinking of wrapping it up, but maybe we can come up with a little bit of okay. uh, a way to remember this. So, uh, Toby, you're my title guy. What's the title of this? Uh, of uh, of this? <laughs> Put you on the spot. 
Oh, Jesus. <laughs> they, they, uh, sorry. All right. Well, let's, 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 what are they called? They're spirit journeys. Mm -hmm. They're the dark cave that you're supposed to be taken into. There's the hero's journey. Mm. Um, there's this enlightenment. Is the, this is the loser's journey. There's. I mean, there's something to me. There's something about a teacher taking a completely unsuspecting school, you know, mediocre class on this extraordinary spiritual journey Maybe without warning it, them. Just call it head trip for the time being. Cause, cause there you crazy. go. Oh, that's brilliant. Right, so there we go. So we got. I'm with you, Toby, on the on the the the, the sort of utterly average class and this teacher and and yeah, and you and you end up in this other thing. <laughs> Yes. Well, weren't those, you know, weren't there those, there's always those classes where you're thinking to yourself, oh God, you know, the class has a really generic name and you're thinking this is going to be really boring. And you go and you meet the professor on the first day and he's really quiet and unassuming and it's hard to hear him. And uh, do you remember that, do you remember that professor that we had um, for history, for like Russian history, who was like, bring your oh. sleeping bag because... Every oh, time, yeah. you know, uh, Hoffman, Hoffman. <laughs> that's right. And I remember one time I actually Mr. stabbed Hoffman. my leg with a pencil to try to stay awake because it was just <laughs> I remember that. excruciating. <laughs> so, you know, you and think it's going you, you to be like that. Right. And, and, uh, and all, and all the rest of it, but they, they take you, he's really professor shaman that takes you on the head trip. So Let's see. The, Hoffman the, managed is it to a make sort of the history of the Soviet Union boring, which was quite yeah. remarkable. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. That's that is amazing. I mean, is it the sort of class that people take thinking it's just one they can slack off in, like film history or something or, else where they all sign up for it going, oh, I, I, I won't have to do any work on this whatsoever. You know what? It's a semiotics Although class. Although I, I kind of vote for like the, the, the like 12-year-olds or something. Like there's something about yeah. children. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. As opposed yes, to university students, like the, the kind of, trip. they're so I innocent. I like the idea, like the, yeah. the, in, the innocence, yeah. Of or the just idea. yeah, or just more like things are a little more at, in play, like what mm -hmm. can occur. So the teacher was married to a shaman who's just dumped him, mm. uh, because he couldn't get, he couldn't, he wasn't on her level. And so he's, he's, he's dragging the kids along on this thing where he's going to, he's going to get her back. He's going to get enlightenment. Well, I was actually thinking I was going to pull up a premise to see if he can find a premise to shape it. And the first one that I pulled out was this one, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And I was thinking, Hmm, that could be an interesting one with the kids on a school trip. And you know, it, it, that totally. And that's when I go, <laughs> less domestic and i mean i don't know what their personal motivation is the teacher and it could be something around a relationship mm -hmm. but that it's that it's it's mm -hmm. this saving the world thing that's the one that's like no no we got to save yes, the world okay. like it's my responsibility to save the world and you're gonna have to do that because we fucked up yeah yep okay <laughs> that's great so actually i i don't have a very good um a very good tagline just yet but for the moment I'm going to hold a placeholder with save the world one penguin at a time because <laughs> I like your, your, you guys are an emperor penguins. You have no food, but you've got to protect the, 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 the mm. penguin, little penguin. It's like, how do you do it? And, and yep. They're all running Sit around. on the egg. Sit on and the like, egg. You don't have any yeah. arms. You don't have any arms. You've know? <laughs> you yeah. got to do everything with your feet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. And that's like that's avalanche is coming. Avalanche is coming. You're all gonna die. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> no, stay on the egg. Stay on the egg. Avalanche is coming. <laughs> uh, um. So, so I think that. Um. So actually, I okay. I think we are. I think we do have a dramatic question forming here, which I like. Which is, which is what, what, if a professor? Let's see takes his class on a shamanistic head trip to save the planet. I mean, it's really one, one penguin at a time kind of out there, but that's sort of, you know, <laughs> we, I can, we can work on the wording, but it's sort of that gets some of the ideas in there that the, 
So this professor, he's this a professor of sort of climate change. He really wants the kids to feel climate change, um, and mm -hmm. so he takes them to a, you know, a VR museum. So, so we've got some elements here. Well, look, that's here. that's that's two great ideas today. We got that, yeah. and we have the 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 loser bazillionaires trying to save people. I think that's two yeah. good I, sort of premises. So I'm going to say the mass extinction museum is kind of funny, but it is sort of like a, the climate change museum, and it's the, it's the, um, the, the no, you are the exhibit. I think is important. The the you are the exhibit, um, and so the, it's, it's participation. I mean, performance art participation, and you go on a journey of mass extinction, like it. And the cat is now telling us it is time to wrap it up because it's feeding time. Let's go it's cat feeding. It's dinner. <laughs> dinner in the UK. Dinner it is. Well, guys, thank you very much. Um, thank you. I Thanks can't wait fun. to do it, it again. <laughs> and I'll see you soon, hopefully. Hopefully next okay, week we'll I can get soon. time with you. <laughs> okay. That's perfect. Take care bye, and stay bye. safe. Yeah, bye. bye.